Welcome to Creativity in Focus, a weekly live podcast where we highlight an artist every single week. And this week is not different. I have an amazing artist to, for you to get to know better. Now, before we get started, I have a few announcements to make. Whatever you are watching this, you may be watching this on Facebook, you may be watching on YouTube or any other place where this, this podcast goes to. It's a fantastic time for you to share this with your friends. The whole podcast is content-based only. There is no selling of any type, so it's safe to share anywhere. And, of course, when you do that, you're just spreading the word about art and artists, and we need to highlight as many artists as possible, right? Also, if you're watching this on a place where you can give a like, a thumbs up, some hearts, do that, please. It does impact a lot the visibility of the podcast, and we rely on our audience to help us promote this every week. So please take a second to do that. Now, because this podcast is a live podcast, you have a very unique chance to interact with the artists. How do you do that? Wherever you're watching, there is a chat box either beside the video or below the video. Look for that. At any time you have a question to these amazing artists, ask away, make your comments, share with us also your experience in the same arena if that's the case. We love the interaction. It turns everything into something much more enjoyable for people and you get to talk to an, an artist face to face. Isn't that cool? <laughs> This week I have with me Jenny Ferguson. She's a fiber artist. I've known her for a little bit, right? Of maybe a couple, two or three years. Yes. Uh, we go to a group together, which by the way, every single artist should belong not only to local groups, but guilds and associations because it, you only get benefits out of it. Not only you get more friends, which is always good, but you get to share experiences and issues that you might, have in, uh, might be having in your art and people will give their two cents about how they solve that. So it's invaluable to join guilds, associations and groups in your town. So do that. that that's homework for you. <laughs> but Jenny, welcome, first of all. Thank you. So you are a fiber artist. I am. First, tell me, <laughs> when was the first time you start playing with fiber of any type? You know, I am really fortunate. A lot of people in my life are artistic. Um, my great grandma was probably the one that introduced me. She was a fantastic lady, loved the color red. And I had chicken pox and my mom had her tend me and she taught me to crochet probably to keep my hands busy. Okay. And I Not think scratchy. I, yes. <laughs> and I think I chain stitched like an entire skein of red heart yarn. Really? But after that, I just never gave it up. I, I started with crochet and that was probably my favorite medium for a long time, just because she was so accessible uh -huh. to learn more. Um, I moved into knitting, um, actually after I had had kids, mm -hmm. and um, girl, and then it just kind of blew up from there. I, I learned to spin and weave and felt and <laughs> so much, so much All more. All the things related yeah, to fiber, right? Yeah, and I, you know, I, I really enjoy learning new things and trying different mediums and putting them all together. Uh -huh. And yeah, so that's... You see, I, I don't know how it is today. I'm not a grandmother myself, but I also learned to crochet and a little bit of knitting from my grandmother. And I remember she was patient. <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't get it from the get-go, but she, she did try and she impacted. I think if I like fiber, I'm not a big crocheter or knitter at all, but I do felting. Uh, so I think she had the purpose to inspire me to explore fiber. And I hope grandmas are still doing that. You they know, don't j just give an iPad to the kid and say, go play your game. You know, my daughter and I were actually talking about that because we we're actually talking about how much it's brought to my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I've turned it into a business and it's what I do to relax. And it's, you know, my creative outlet. And I've met friends um, because of it. And I was like, you know, if she would have had any idea mm -hmm. the impact that just a simple afternoon of teaching me to crochet would have exactly. on my life, I, I would like to think that she would be so proud and, yeah, I and amazed. It, it, I mean, I wish we could go back and say thank you, right? Because probably yes. when they were teaching, we would go, whatever, right? <laughs> you know, I think actually I've thought a lot about that. I'm kind of sentimental. Uh -huh. So I thought, you know, I can't go back and thank her, but I can teach other people mm -hmm. and give that to them and I I hope in a way that that that's as good as a thank you 
So you have kids today, right? I do. I have a 17-year-old daughter who is, um, she's musical. Uh -huh. She's also artistic. She she does knit and crochet with me and nice. has done some weaving. So you're passing that legacy, Yes, right? and then my son's 13, and he's more into RC cars and Boy Scouts, but uh -huh. he's creative too. That's so. good, that's good. And you also teach other people, right? I do. You know, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to have some formal teaching opportunities um, as well as just kind of some informal ones as well. Uh -huh. I, I think they're both really fun. I, I like to pass it on. This year you're a, the president of the Spinning Guild. I am, yes. Our local Spinning Guild is Wasatch Woolpack Hand Spinners. And we meet the third Tuesday of every month and we're in Utah. Yeah. Um, and I'm co-president. So it's like right today. Yes, <laughs> yes. In fact, I'm leaving here where, and going Where do there. you guys meet then? Um, there's a Viridian Center. It's a big event center attached to a library. We meet the third Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. And I am fortunate enough, um, my very best friend is co-presidents with me. And my other best friend is vice president. And and all my other best friends are in the guild. Oh, so. So it's a party, <laughs> not a guild. Let's it's a party. It. <laughs> it's such a party. <laughs> and, you know, I, 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 I've been going to that guild for about two years, I believe, now. Mm -hmm. And I don't spin. No. I cannot <laughs> find the why in the spinning part, but I have so much fun. It's really one of my favorite groups, not only because it's a very big group. The other uniqueness of that group is that you do have all ages. You do. Which is a challenge. I know because I go to a lot of groups. Uh, it's a challenge for 90% of the groups to be able to attract. You attract a lot of younger people, like from kids, that's so nice of you to say. Right? <laughs> to, to every single age. That, that you, you attract both genders as well. We do. Right? Yes. You, you, you have quite a few men going there. So it's unbelievable because when you look at the many guilds today, you see the challenge that they have in bringing new people. New people not only in the sense of new, but also younger. You know, I think we're fortunate in the fact that we are primarily a spinning guild. And so we do a lot of spinning. Mm -hmm. But... So many people there do so many things. We have amazing knitters. Yes. Um, we have people that do, I mean, you're a fantastic felter and you're there. And so the amazing thing for me personally, if I get to speak on a selfish level, is that if there's anything I've ever wanted to try, mm -hmm. there is somebody, somebody there who either knows how to do it or knows who to direct me mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... That's a well, great thing. Having access to somebody doing always avoids you a lot of frustration in the process because they're going to tell you from the get go, don't do this. It's going to ruin the piece or whatever. Right. And you can go online and keep researching all night long. But if you have a buddy that you can ask, I'm trying to do this. How do I do it? Well, it's amazing how something really simple, like, for example, I, I kind of got into spinning because I wanted to learn core spinning, which is, you know, where you're wrapping fiber around a core. Hmm. And it's not traditional. It's, you know, really an art yarn or a novelty yarn, but I loved the texture. And I tried it and I ended up with a yarn that was so thick and so heavy, you could have docked Titanic. I mean, it was, <laughs> there are ropes that are not that strong and that's not what I was going for. So there was a gal there, she was able to show me in five minutes just how a different hand motion yes. made it a loftier, softer, Product. usable mm -hmm. yarn instead of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> she uses that rope now to ride the horse. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. you could have probably, uh-huh. Yeah, right? Uh-huh. Uh, Gwen Nicholson is saying hello. Hi. And don't forget, you have a chat, interact with Jenny. She would love that. Jenny, how long have you been spinning? For how long? Let's see. Okay, I had a spinning whirlwind. Um, we used to live in just a regular neighborhood. Uh -huh. And my kids were little. And I'd put them to bed, and I was knitting. And it was late. And I think it was like a replay on cable of Oprah. Huh. And she was talking to a woman who had, I believe, opened her own bakery. But the context was to live your passions, mm -hmm. that, you know, the world needs bakers, the world needs whatever you're into. So I went to sleep and I dreamed that I lived on this yarn farm when I could spin my own yarn and have my own yarn animals. And the only sad part of that whole dream was when I woke up and I couldn't shake it. Huh. I thought about it for days and fortunately, I'm married to a very, very sweet, wonderful, enabling man. <laughs> and I told him two days later, I was like, okay, I just have to 
run this by you. I have to get it out of my system. If I just tell you, then it will go away. How long have you been married by then? Oh, we've been married a long time. Let's see. Oh. We were married in 96 and Ooh. I don't know. We'd probably be married at least. I don't even want to guess. Don't make me do math. <laughs> okay. We've been married okay. a long time. Anyway, um, so he got really quiet and I thought, okay, I've used up my last little bit of crazy. Mm. He's planning an exit. And he said, you know, I think we should do it. Wow. He said, um, do a little more research and let's sell the house and buy a farm. Wow. So we did. Uh -huh. um, the house sold to the first people that looked at it. And we were on a treasure hunt for the perfect property. We found an acre in Bluffdale and it was probably eight months after my dream, I lived on an alpaca farm. <laughs> <laughs> I learned to how spin. Long, how long now? Since it's been five years now. Five years. But we bought alpacas before I'd ever seen a spinning wheel in real life. Mm -hmm. And I found a lady through um, Great Basin Fiber uh -huh. Arts Fair that teaches. Her name's Judy Gunn. She's phenomenal. <laughs> and, uh, God, I haven't looked back. You know what? Wow. I'm, it's, it's so like, it was a wise decision. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's brought a lot to me. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, I look at that and I think, oh, that's really selfish to pick up my kids and my husband and do this thing that was just for me. But when I really thought about it, somebody asked me that and my son has been able to, you know, see animals born and mm -hmm. he loves animals. And, you know, it was a really good move for my daughter. You know, the school that she goes to now is phenomenal. And, you know, she said to me, it's really amazing to have a mom who demonstrated you know, to, to go get your dreams. That things are possible, right? Yeah. 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 That, that's a, a great story because we, we talk to artists here every day, right? And many times, as in anybody's life, there are ups and downs. And they are going maybe to a, a down money-wise. And they come and they say, well, I won't be able to teach. I won't be able to do this because my husband got fired. Whatever is the story. And now I have to go find work. And I, I, I never say anything because it's not my place. But I always think, man, your hands can create magic, right? What you really love can create, make a difference. And that's the one thing you're giving up, right? Instead of, of going in the uh, mindset of, OK, I can create stuff. I can sell stuff. I mean, how many uh, fairs like the Great Basin are there out there in the country? Like, you, you could do yeah. that. Of course, many people do as a, as a business, but no, that's the very first thing you give up is what you love to do. And I, I can't, you know, and I had ups and downs in my life galore, and I have <laughs> rebuilt my life at least three times from zero. So I know what they are going through. And I keep thinking, but you have to pursue what you really like because that will be the ultimate thing for you. It doesn't look like at the beginning and it's challenging. Gosh, you could go buy alpaca uh, fiber as much as you want, Yes. right, in Utah. You, and you have probably a lot of work raising them, right? Because I have fish and dogs, and they take a lot of time. You I know, can imagine alpacas. It's a work, but, and a lot of people ask me that, and maybe I'm crazy. It's possible. But I find that when I'm out with my animals, and, you know, even if I'm doing something where I'm mucking the barn, mm -hmm. I feel good. You know, I'm out in the fresh air. It's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. They're little fuzzy faces. They make me laugh. And they don't spit much like the uh, uh, llamas, right? <laughs> I've oh, they do. hit a few good times, <laughs> usually square in the face. Really? Because I'm about the same height as an alpaca. How beautiful, Paca. How beautiful. <laughs> yes. What I have learned, here's a good little information for you to take with you. If you ever are spit at by uh -huh. an alpaca, it is best to let it dry before you try to wipe it away because oh otherwise gosh. it smears. So <laughs> really? dry it just brushes right off. But yeah, so yes. Okay. <laughs> They're cute little animals though. They are cute. They're sweet. Bonnie Visser is saying hello to both of you ladies from Wisconsin. I don't know, is, is it cold there and snowy? Because we are in the middle of the spring here and it's snowing today. Yes, we had snow today. Yes, um, a lot actually in the morning. We've kind of, it's typical Utah spring. We yeah. were what, 62 or so mm -hmm. this weekend and today we had snow. Yep. I think tomorrow it's back up to like 61. <laughs> who so. knows, who knows. Yes. So you told me, you do, you still work outside the farm, correct? I do. 
Tell I me work, what you do. I work part time for Unified Police. I've done that since 1998. Well, I used to be full time, but I quit and went part time when I had Caleb. And um, I answer 911 calls, and I'm a police dispatcher. And it's it's really fun sometimes. It's almost always rewarding. Uh huh. But then are, there are days where I am really, really glad that I can go home to a calm, quiet yes. spinning wheel. <laughs> I bet. I bet. It cannot be easy. Let's show some of your pieces first before okay. we go on. So here we have some bags that she made. Tell me a little bit about this so, one. Um, these are actually, I, I kind of fell in love with freeform crochet a long time ago. Um, there's a lot you can find online and it's mm -hmm. kind of fun. But because I do multiple fiber arts. I weave, I spin, I knit, I crochet, <laughs> it goes on. I kind of wanted a way to combine them mm -hmm. and come up with a piece that was maybe a showcase to what I do. And it gave me a chance to use my stash and also to use like little experiments mm -hmm. and put them together and have a finished piece. Okay. And it's great conversation too when people are like, oh, oh yeah. did you make that? And it's, yes. yes. I, I love to make bags because of that. Yes. So you crochet? So, so this one was, um, it, it's needle felted hmm. onto On a felt base. Okay. And then this is crochet. This is as well. This was actually weaving done on a triangle loom. And then I did some zigzag oh. stitching with my... Um, you really combine everything. Sewing machine. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. That's but cool. But I kind of like it. it uh, this one, I actually wasn't too lazy and I lined and put in a zipper. So I nice. I did like that. Uh -huh. It's kind of fun. Um, this is the same thing. This one, this was knitting. This was actually going to be a very beautiful shawl that I saw on Ra Ravelry. Uh -huh. And I just could not make the pattern work. <laughs> I lost interest. So I cut it up and it got to go on a bag. See? I loved the yarn. Repurposing? Yes, All for yes. That? Uh, that, I have yeah, attention deficit. So <laughs> if I don't love it, I, it ends up something else. Um, this was actually on a big washer. Uh -huh. And I crocheted over the washer and nice. just put fabric behind it. This was knitting. And this is wet felted? No, this, this was just needle felted. All needle felted? Yep. Wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it was that's just kind of fun. So. Okay. Yeah. And below here, what do we have? This was, I actually brought because I'm, I so love my guild. Let me get that for you so you can put it up. Mm -hmm. And, and Bonnie is saying that she had 30 inches of snow since Friday. Oh, that's too much snow. That's I'm not a fan. That's a lot. And Tammy is saying, Tammy Eversledge, she's an instructor at Curious Mondo, saying hello, ladies. And she's, uh, Bonnie is saying she loves your bags. Oh, thank you. <laughs> They're fun to make. This was actually a shawl that we did. If there's any guild um, people out there, we, um, I think there was, I can't remember, 12 to 15 of us that participated. Wow. We all spun, um, we had a general colorway. And we all spun a yarn, so this orange one was mine. And I started and I did so much of a pattern, and then we passed it, so I can't remember. Everybody needed yeah. a look and at so what a cool idea. It's everybody's hand spun and. That's so pretty. So each one ended up with the one. Yeah, the different we all one. started. So okay. mine's orange here, uh -huh. you know, this, this gal started hers, and we just passed them. Nice. And we called it the friendship shawl. It was yeah. really fun to do. I know this year you did the crochet <laughs> one you're doing, right? Yes, the we're doing a vest. One. I'm so sad because I thought finally I could participate, but you have to spun your own yarn, so that goes oh, down the drain for me. Oh, you should me how to spun your yarn. <laughs> <laughs> this little baby here. This is going to be, I'm actually teaching at Great Basin, and uh -huh. um, I'm doing a peg loom weaving class for rugs. And wow. So I was going to teach a class on core spinning. This is core The peg loom is like the pin loom or a, no, a different it's, one? No, um, it's really simple. It's probably, I mean, you can do them any length, uh -huh. but I like them about as probably three feet wide. Okay. My husband would die because he knows the measurements exactly. Yeah. But it just has a bunch of pegs and uh -huh. they slide in and you, oh. you just weave. It's really fast and then you pull the peg out of the hole mm -hmm. and it advances the okay. weaving down. But I'm going to use this to do a rug. So this will be... Nice. The weft of a rug. Is you can that also your alpaca? Use, or? You know, this was, as a spinner, you end up with a odds and ends fiber stash. Yep. So if it was a good natural color, I let it be. Everything else got thrown in a dye pot, and I added a little bit of black acid dye and a little bit of brown acid dye. And That's it. And core spun it, and we'll see what, what kind of rug it makes. That's so but, cool. Yeah. Um, Tammy's saying that bag is gorgeous. Chris is saying... 
Uh, learning to felt, die, woo, and hopefully to crochet, weave, and spin one day, <laughs> hoping to join our local guild. Do that, do that. As I did not have anyone to teach me growing up, love learning and creating. Uh, another thing with guilds and associations, many times you are in a place where you don't have a lot of options, like yarn shops, for example, they, yes. they close mm -hmm. by the bunch, right? Uh, you don't have schools maybe that you can attend, uh, a continuing ad class, but the guild, you always have people to teach. And one thing that all groups are pretty much the same is that they are willing to teach. Yeah, right? you know, I, I'm really fortunate. We have so many here. Wasatch Wolfpack is kind of my home base guild because they're right yeah. where I live. And I'm president this year. <laughs> that so you got to show up there. Yeah. Yep. I, my attendance is uh, pretty good this year. Um, but there's also a few guilds that are near me that uh -huh. I've been able to frequent. You know, that's interesting to me how different guilds can be from oh, yes. from group to from group. From very but, boring to very exciting. <laughs> you know, they're, they all have something to offer. Yeah. And I guess I'm just a really social person, but they're, I don't know, I love. Well, I, I think I'm going to toot the horn for this group because another thing that you guys are very creative in what you plan. So, for example, you have the fiber challenge this year, right? So, yes. every, so we paid whatever, and we get a little bit of fiber every month that is different. Well, for me, for example, I, I am a fiber artist, but my scope was go online and buy the fiber. So usually uh, merino, something mm -hmm. like that. Well, now I've been getting some to experiment every single month. Like I, I have banana fiber. I have rose fiber, mm -hmm. right? I, I, very cool stuff that you think, really? Can, fiber from a banana? Well, and, it's, a and nice, it's gorgeous. It's a nice learning opportunity, too, because we give out between an ounce and two ounces, depending uh -huh. on cost and how it is to spin. Um, and the deal is you only have to pay in once. Yeah. And as long as you bring it back the next month, you get the you next get month. The, yeah. Just as rose part of, fiber. Yeah. The rose fiber yeah. made a uh, hair of a doll out of that. Yeah, it's, there's been some fibers that yeah. we've had such <laughs> great feedback. Everybody's loved it. And then yeah. we've had fibers that are a little more challenging. The stinky ones? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one that we had to wash. Yeah. But the great thing is people are motivated to mm -hmm. try a fiber that maybe they wouldn't otherwise. Or, um, you know, a fiber that they maybe haven't heard of. Mm -hmm. um, we did the panda fiber last year or last month, which isn't panda bear. That was a good learning opportunity. It was a bamboo, merino, and I think nylon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a sock, sock roving, okay. and it was a blend. We've done, um, we're going to try hemp. We've got angora yeah. rabbit this, this month. Um, we've had a bunch. You had a bunch, fun. but besides the fact that people can try things that they, for example, I never touched angora rabbit. Actually, I did in the fair, a, a, a real live one. <laughs> yes. uh, the other thing is makes people go back, right? Because I, I know, yes. for example, in a day like today, I'm tired by the end of the day. I don't want to go anywhere, but I keep thinking, but I don't want to miss because if I miss, I miss the fiber, right? <laughs> so it's one, well, many groups, they have a real challenge on keep on going because people dwindle out of that because everybody has a busy life. Well, I think the other thing that's really important and... Um I think we do it okay. Mm -hmm. I hope we do it okay. No, you do very well. Is that when you have somebody new that comes through the door for the first time, trying to make them feel welcome and wanted and like there's room for them mm -hmm. has been a challenge for our group because we are all like best, best friends. Mm -hmm. And so when you're new, when you come into the, the guild, it seems like, oh, all these people have been friends for ever and maybe they don't need a new friend. <laughs> But Gal, you know, our new members, we've had, we've been fortunate. I can think of, I think four that joined last month that hadn't come before. I really hope that they, come they back. catch the bug yep. and they feel welcome and they feel the enthusiasm and because everybody really has something to offer. Mm -hmm. So. They are a fun group. They're very, yeah. I, I, it was the same thing with me. The very first time I went there, first of all, I don't spin. That's a disconnection <laughs> from the group in itself. <laughs> But it was uh, a very, uh, everybody there is different. So I really thought, what an interesting group of people <laughs> from the sense of weird. Yes. <laughs> but then 
once you're there, you start seeing how friendly and how they, they, they joke about everything. And then you say, yes. it's actually quite fun. Yes, sometimes right. we have to. <laughs> yeah, and that kept me coming. Uh, Tammy's saying, it's Shaw, a fantastic idea, Friendship Shaw. And it really is. Keeps oh, people so engaged. Fun. We're doing another one this year that's a little more complicated. It was a Stephen West pattern, and it had a lot of gar garter stitch, but it's very geometrical. Uh -huh. And um, oh, it's turning out amazing. <laughs> yeah, they, they are great. Uh, Sue is saying, greetings from sunny, warm Charleston, North Carolina, uh, North, South Carolina. So she's just saying, you people with snow. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk a little about the financials? What's possible income? So that's a very good question because you, you, you also have a business in this, correct? I do. Um, the business that I started, you know, when I, when I left the, it was the sheriff's office at the time. We're, we're now unified police, but... When I left the sheriff's office and went part-time um, to raise my kids, you know, we were trying to absorb the cost difference. Mm -hmm. And um, I had, of course, always crocheted, and I had spent, I don't even know how much, buying. It's really popular oh, yeah. here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is elsewhere. You guys will have to let me know. But it was hem-stitched kits, and it's generally here it's flannel, and it's a stitch that's done on a hem-stitching machine. It's a hole that goes around the outside, okay. and I would buy them to crochet around to give as baby gifts. They usually came with like a, a receiving blanket and two burp cloths, or sometimes there was a car seat blanket. But I'd spent a lot of money mm -hmm. on those, and so I just decided it was getting harder and harder to find, and I decided I'm going to try starting my own business. Okay. So, so I did. And I'm much busier than I even want to be, but it's great. I love it. Um, I don't think I've ever I, seen one. So. Okay, so this is one that, that I actually did. This oh. is finished. Okay. So the kits just come with the holes. Um, and then you just do the crochet. Yeah, it just okay. allows okay. you to do a crochet edging around the outside. It's a great way to finish off, like I said, burp cloths or receiving oh, blankets. Okay. You know, pretty much I, I've done cotton like mm -hmm. just regular quilting cotton, but here flannel is what's popular. And they're usually done double-sided. You know, this was obviously the front and then the back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I sell those kits. Uh, Do you sell online? Do you sell to friends? Uh, I'm on Facebook, <laughs> but I will say I'm a fantastic fiber artist who tends to jam up computers. So <laughs> No, she's totally phobic with technology. Let me tell you, to convince this woman to use an email <laughs> took me months. Well, I do email. It right, goes now like you this. do well. Before it was twice a year. I open out my space. email and it's select all delete. Yeah, see, so <laughs> see, oh. I text. Um, I do. I'm on Facebook. Um, but it's I, still profitable, even though you're not. You don't. Well, you, you don't know, sell this on a website or anything. No, I. I have some of the kits. My mom has a business in American Fork, and it's it's in her shop. Mm -hmm. And then I get a lot of people that contact me either through Facebook or text me. And I'm happy to, to to send out kits if they would like them. But it's just been, I've been crazy busy with just the local. A lot of people bring me fabric mm -hmm. um, so I can hem stitch their fabric or or wow. they get kits. Now, you, do you sell the opaca uh, fiber? Well, I should when it comes up? because I have a closet that, you know, Rumpelstiltskin might be able to get <laughs> through. Um, we've looked at a few mills. I, I use a little bit of my my fiber mm -hmm. and you know a, a few of our guild members have have purchased from me as far as marketing i just i'm really bad at that <laughs> so sue she might not be the best person to give you financial. <laughs> if you but can, i can tell you you can text me <laughs> or find me on facebook selling the fiber there are quite a few people there that do that right then um, is it a good supplement do you think for inc the income or not the hem stitching is okay um I really do the spinning and the alpacas and the farming mm -hmm. because you I like. want to do it for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to it. I just haven't. I just haven't gone in that area with mm -hmm. any amount of motivation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there is. I, I I think really, if you want to take as a full business, uh, you need to think about either having a website or selling on online. We've seen more and more and more artists really focusing on auctions inside Facebook. So yes. they put a piece mm -hmm. and they say the minimum, let's say it's five dollars, whatever. They, they, you run the risk of losing money, too. But I've seen more and more people doing that successfully. I have uh, a it's one friend, way. the one that taught me to spin. She was telling me there's a Facebook site for um, like raw fleeces and 
raw wools. Oh. And so oh, I. Oh, the marketplace, you mean? Probably, but yep. it's specifically for. Oh. Um, uh -huh. For fleece. Okay. So I need to check that out. Mm -hmm. But. So you do you do have many opportunities. The the thing with having any business is that you have to focus on doing multiple things. Not only creating, the creating is the fun part, right? Uh, the selling, it, it depends on how you take selling. I, for example, enjoy, but there is work involved. You are either yes. going to meetings all the time or opportunities to show or participating in bazaars and, and fiber festivals and selling online. So you have to plan that really well. Well, and I've been really fortunate in the fact that word of mouth for me, because I, I probably focus on a more local market, uh -huh. Um, word of mouth has just been amazing. Yep. So it takes a while to start going, but once it goes, mm -hmm. it works really well. Yeah. Guest 163 is asking, what was the most challenging fiber you spun? Okay. Uh, alpaca is challenging in itself, um, isn't alpaca it? Alpaca can be a little bit slippery. I honestly love spinning alpaca. I've loved most wools. I was trying to think, um, I find the plant-based fibers maybe more challenging just for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's just personal preference. Um, I, I like the feel of the animal fibers. I was trying to think, I, I have to say one of the more challenging fibers that I ever tried was something that had been poorly dyed by me and partially felted. <laughs> so don't, don't felt your fiber. <laughs> It actually, in hindsight, made a beautiful yarn. It was mm -hmm. bumpy and lumpy and turned out very textural, which is what I like, but it was a challenge. Okay. So I haven't so. met a fiber I don't, I don't absolutely love. Angora rabbit is slippery. I've um, heard that, that is quite. I love the effect. I have learned um, that if you are gonna spin Angora, if you have just a little mist mist squirt bottle of course here it's really dry so that may not be true in other climates okay but if i missed it just slightly it's it, it turns it out easier. a lot better oh. so i think i think just no matter what you're spinning there's probably a way to spin it better or i don't know <laughs> alpaca is probably my favorite <laughs> kitter saying we love everyone in our group oh. uh guess 532 do you sell your pieces so the finished pieces do you sell them or I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but she hasn't tried yet. But, you know, I have a really large family, and it's always somebody's birthday, and somebody's always got a request. And I guess I'm fortunate in the way that, you know, my husband and I both have very traditional jobs, mm -hmm. so I don't feel like I have to. Um, I'm busy with my kids. I'm busy with my work. I'm busy teaching. I'm busy hem stitching. I guess that tops the list of what I have to do. By the time I get down to a creative venue and I finish a piece, most of the time I meet somebody who's fallen in love with it, and I, I gift a lot. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I gift a lot, but I, I like to sell too. You have another bag there. I do. Show this me. one I'm on the quest for the perfect handles. I, <laughs> I can't seem to locate them. I will. But, yeah, this is just another one. Um, so this one, my son, when I was putting this bag together. Can you put here so we can yeah, give a close up. He, um, he had gone through a pair of pants. So this is actually the small pocket that's like actually inside one of the front pockets. And oh. I just cut it apart. And it is actually a pocket that nice. stayed true. So this was my son's pants. <laughs> and this is um, punch needle Ooh. and crochet. It's got felt in the background, the needle felting. Um, what else is on That's here? I don't gorgeous. think I put weaving on Let's this. Let's see the other side. This one actually, if you fall in love with this swirl, mm -hmm. that is the top of an ice cream lid <laughs> that I just cut out about a quarter of an inch wide in that shape and I just uh, crocheted around it. Uh huh. So that's, that's, that's how gorgeous. I did that. It's yeah. really, it's fun. This one I lined too. I'm kind of proud when I line them because usually I get lazy and I don't. I do the same thing. <laughs> same, nobody's going to look in here. Nobody will look inside. <laughs> and this beautiful piece this here. This one is a triangle loom shawl. So you gave a, a class here actually, a Curious Mondo, on how to use a triangle. And we had three sizes, right, of looms that you yes, used? Yes, we had the seven foot, which makes a it's pretty good one. size yeah. shawl. Look how a three gorgeous. foot and then an 18 inch. And actually I've fallen more in love with my 18 inch recently because it does like this size that goes on these bags really mm -hmm, easy. Mm -hmm. um, I know you had a pin loom weaving class here Yeah, as with well. Sarah from the group. And yep. that would be phenomenal um, to, to incorporate to in yeah. these too. 
I'm making a coat out of that. <laughs> so here you use natural fibers and some fun yarn. I did, I broke all the rules with yep. this one. I just went through my stash and pulled out anything that was kind of earth toned. Um, there is no rhyme or reason or a pattern. I just kind of just started weaving and there you go. It's one of my favorites. Do you also weave in other looms that are not the triangle? I have a rigid heddle loom. Um, I've liked that. I did a really cool table runner and sometimes I cut them up to make pieces. Um, what else have I done with that? Some scarves. Um, trying to think what other weaving. I actually <laughs> just found, I don't, I don't profess to do it, uh -huh. but I found a local studio. Um, it's a Sayori studio uh -huh. here and it's just kind of free. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, that they have a very interesting concept, right? There's no no wrong, no mistakes. So you just go there? Yes. I, you, the, the studio here, she has four looms. And so, you know, for me, that means take three friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we just went up there, and she does it in a block of time. You just pay for a block, and you just weave. She shows you how and different things to try, and it's just... It's, I don't know, talk about heaven it's with fun. your hands. It's uh -huh. just a way to just do something tactical that's totally relaxing. And and, and you, you have to think about this. If you have something like that in your town, I've seen the pieces. I have not I have oh, not been to the amazing. place, but I've seen the pieces. They were all gorgeous. Uh, if you have somebody, and sometimes that somebody is somebody in your family. It can be a daughter. It can be some, some your your niece. can be somebody older that you, you, you're thinking, if they could only start making something, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that's all it takes. You start experimenting with something. Your self-esteem change is not about only making pieces and selling or giving. It's your self-esteem uh, start, start thinking, I can make stuff, I can do this. It's a whole different feeling. If we, you have teenagers, you know how not easy they are, <laughs> right? And sometimes finding them a path, um, I used to, I did psychology when I went to college. And when you were evaluating a person, one of the things you, you look for, what are their hobbies? Mm -hmm. And a person that does not have any hobby is, is one red flag. Doesn't mean anything by itself, but is one red flag. Because where do you put the anxiety that you have extra? Where, uh, where do you try to solve problems? Uh, where, how do you deal with your feelings? And many times it's anything, fiber, clay, glass, whatever, but you're putting that out there. And in the process of doing so, not only you're figuring out your emotions, uh, you're, you're increasing your self-esteem. When we think, and you work with that, so uh, I'm not telling you anything new. <laughs> when you think about the rate of suicide of young people today, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, and there are many sad. reasons for that, but uh, we need to be aware that sometimes giving purpose to making things can avoid something bad. And it's, it's on your shoulders out there because you know young people, you have young people around you, and sometimes they are super connected, they're, but it's all abstract because the problem with all these devices, uh, it's abstract, it's, it's almost fake. If you get sick, Nobody's going to visit you in the hospital. Not none of your connections. If you don't look pretty on Instagram, nobody's <laughs> going to pay attention. So you do need the real tactile part in life. Well, and you know, it's interesting. When my son was little, he always has been very mathematical, and you know, I, I'm fortunate that I have healthy, happy, well-adjusted children for the <laughs> most part. Knock on wood. But I found that when I would take him into my creative world, whichever way that might be. Mm -hmm. It, it cemented and it brought in some of the other things that he was learning in a way that really made sense in it. Like you said, a three-dimensional, hands-on, really good brain connection kind of way. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's problem solving. Well, and it is, you know, one of the things that I teach when I teach really young kids, you know, mm -hmm. I like to take fiber and, you know, they're not looking at like how to get the perfect spun yarn. But I take the yarn and I break it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, look at how easy this is to break. We can't do anything with this. It will fall apart. What are we going to do to make it stronger? You know, and they always have some really random ideas. And some of them are pretty good. <laughs> but, you know, as I sit there, I start to twist it. Mm -hmm. And then once you twist that fiber, it's a lot harder to break. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, well, what if this still wasn't strong enough? What would we do to make it stronger? Oh, well, if we add a second strand, now it's twice as strong. And just mm -hmm. to watch that that Process. concept mm -hmm. in their head 
even if they're never going to do anything with yarn ever again, it's still a concept of, okay, twist adds strength, more than one adds more strength. You know, and you, now that I've yeah, seen it done, mm -hmm. it, it's real, right? Yes. I can go from here to something else. Yeah, it's, and it kind of gets them prob problem solving. I, I um, was invited to do a mountain man rendezvous for an elementary school, and they really wanted to talk about, you know, how you'd go from like homesteading a sheep to a sweater. Huh. And you know, they were young elementary kids and we were outside and there was a lot going on. So I didn't want to lose them in the distraction process and think, oh, this lady never, she does never be quiet. So I was like, okay, so here we go. Here's a big pile of wool, who wants to make a sweater? And we went, you know, well, what, are, what should we do first? And they kind of had to mm -hmm. walk through the process and problem solve. And they figured out on their own that they were going to have to clean it because it stunk. <laughs> and they were going to have to make it stronger because it fell apart. Right. And, you know, when you went through all of that, you know, hopefully they were like, okay. Well, that's how evolution goes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even when we are in caves, we were discontent with something and we try something different and it didn't work or not. We learn from that, we try something else. And that's why we are not pulled by the hair anymore and we don't live in a cave, yes. right? <laughs> it starts like that. You have it's, to be thinking, yeah. what's the process involved? It's so funny that you bring that up. My son was studying um, ancient civilizations in school last year. Mm. And he was so excited because they were looking at some of the tools that had been uh -huh. found. And he was the only one in his class that recognized a drop spindle. <laughs> he felt so smart. So <laughs> he see? came home and told me that. So that was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, it, it's super important. And when you say the sheep to the sweater, uh, we also have to think that we as, as a society cannot lose connection to nature. And this is happening. The other day we had a huge discussion here. Zoos are no zoos right, or, or attractions with animals or not. And one of the things with zoos is, oh, they are, they are in cage, they are, well, first of all, there's a whole other side of studying and science that goes beyond that. But the fact is you take the kids there and they see the tiger, they see the lion, they understand it's real. So when you talk about polar bears not having ice anymore, not having food anymore, they know it's something real, not something out there that doesn't have anything to do with me. Right, and, yeah. and even what you do, you eat meat and you don't, they did, they, they showed on a documentary I saw that uh, people don't know sometimes what a tomato is because they never seen, they see the cooked food, the prep food, and they don't see what a tomato is. I was actually inside a supermarket, I bought an eggplant and the cashier asked me what that was. Yes. And I was thinking, you work here. <laughs> the least you should know is what you sell, right? Yes. But it's a bad, bad situation. So all this teaching, and, and that's a, what you guys also need to think, even when you think about a business, is what's uh, besides creating? Because creating the piece takes time, so they cannot be cheap. And it's not always the solution to a business, but teaching can be. Well, right? and you know, with all the, you know, the, the really sad school shootings, it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know that I have the answers at all. I would never, never claim to. And every situation is, you know, is really complicated. But my husband and I were talking and I said, you know, we have such compassionate children. And we were talking about why we thought that was. And my husband brought up, well, you know, we do live on a farm. Our kids have seen life start mm -hmm. and they've seen it end. And, and they you know, see what it takes to keep them yes, alive. Yes, and there's a value to life. We have this little farm cat. She's so sweet. She showed up, but she had, I don't know what had gotten to her, but she was mangled. Mm. And my husband is very logical, and he was not going to pay the $700 vet bill. <laughs> and so the kids, you know, they laid it on my lap. What's mom going to do? And f fortunately, we were able to really nurse her back to life. Wow. And... You know, my kids were right there the whole process. It took us days. I didn't really think she was going to make it. Mm -hmm. But she did, and she's a very sweet cat now, and she keeps the mice out of our barn, and it's a good thing. And I said to my husband, you know, our kids have been able to see the fight for mm -hmm. life. Yes. That life is valuable, and, you know. Sometimes and, you win, sometimes you don't in the well, process. Well, it's, it's worth a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're they compassionate, and, yeah, we're still meat eaters, but... But yeah, we've learned a lot from mm -hmm. from that experience of yep. being on the farm. So yeah. and creating is not only making art. It's it's nice when you you have that talent, but uh, even teaching people to create a hen house, 
Actually, you have a very cute one. I know, I've been there. Yes. But creating the, so if, if the boy or the girl is not into crochet or whatever, but they, are, they like wood, why not, right? Yes. It, it makes them solve problems. That is a very important thing. Okay, we have a bunch of questions okay. here. <laughs> we, we go on and on <laughs> and on. <laughs> the fiber thing, what is it? Uh, well, I guess 532, was it difficult for you to take that jump and become a professional artist? I sometimes struggle with embracing that and end up not selling my things. I can say you're not alone. You know, I think when you're an artist, you look at your own pieces and they're almost sometimes never finished because mm -hmm. you always have a different vision maybe than what ends up. Um, I'm really fortunate. My parents, they raised three of us kids and we all just think we can do anything. They're, they're great. And so it was a little bit unnerving to like jump and get an alpaca farm, but I was so excited. You just sold the house. But yeah, I was so <laughs> excited. And you know, my, my mom and dad made a good point. You know, they're like, you only live once. Mm -hmm. It's only money you know, just go for it. And yeah. so, you know, I, I always ask what's the worst that it can happen? Well, we I could have decision. fallen flat on our face and had to <laughs> and have to leave on rent in the for barn. a while. Right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I would have hated to have not done that mm -hmm. because of what it's brought to my life. Even if we lost everything tomorrow, mm -hmm. I would still have those memories and that knowledge and those friends and those memories and mm -hmm. I it's work if it didn't work if tomorrow it didn't work I would still be glad I did it today mm -hmm. so I guess I don't I didn't care if if I failed I think when it comes to the fact of calling yourself a professional artist I think in the back of our minds we are waiting for somebody to come and validate what we do like you know a knight shows up and says <laughs> and says guess Five, five, two, five, three, two. I now ordain you as an artist. That you never know, happens. So do that to yourself. Ordain yourself as an artist. It sounds like my friend Kira. When I first started the guild, um, I have a dear, sweet friend. Everybody should have a Kira. Um, she looked at my knitting and I said, "Don't look at my knitting. I'm not a knitter." Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Yeah, you are." And I was like, "No, I'm not. I, I can knit, but I'm not a knitter." And she found me this really cute, it was a, I think from a knitting calendar, and it was said basically the same thing. If you knit, you're a knitter. You're a knitter. Yeah. There's not a society that shows up with papers one day and mm -hmm. professes that you are, so. If you create something that didn't use a pattern or you modify the pattern, you are creating, it's pure art. Yes. Right? Yes. Nobody, there, there's nothing else that you need. You have to well, wake up one day and start calling yourself an artist. And I think because I, beauty is the, in the eye of a beholder. I've been surprised how many times I create something that I'm not in love with and somebody else oh, yeah. is. Or All the time, actually. And you know what? Some pieces I made just because it was fun to do at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> or you wanted to try something else, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Terry sa is asking, Terry Love sa is asking, what is your most treasured creation? Oh, well, that would be my children. <laughs> <laughs> Those beautiful, gorgeous kids I created. Yeah. Um, beyond that, I don't know. It changes day to day. I couldn't say. Um, probably my first hand spun yarn. It's, it's uh, definitely first spun <laughs> yarn, but I still love it. <laughs> Bonnie's saying, I so much want to learn to weave on a big triangle loom. I did love the pin weaving class from Sarah. Well, we have the Triangle Loom uh, class here. It was a huge success. If you can put up with me for, what is it, nine hours? <laughs> nine hours. <laughs> but you learn everything. And, and it's unbelievable how fast, because when we think about weaving, it's not the fastest process at all. Comparing is quite a fast process. You know, it is. Um, I love it, too, because it's a really good use of textural yarn. Mm -hmm. If you have a yarn that's maybe not perfectly spun, or it's just a single, or, you know, we talked about yeah. a lot of different ways to still incorporate that into weaving, um, odds and ends. Everything, yeah. yeah. It, it is really fun. You're going to be in love when you get the class. Uh, Eve Thompson say, I love this interview. So nice to get to know everyone. <laughs> I think so too. But I, I have to tell you, we have, as human beings, we have multiple layers. Yes. Right, and it goes beyond just what we create, how we create, what, what type of fiber we use. It's the whole story 
that is connected to that. Yeah. You know, just think about this. You're not the tallest person I know. I know, I'm like five feet with shoes on. You, she doesn't <laughs> like, it's my size. Doesn't like technology, right? But the, here's a woman that is brave enough to take all the risks and pursue a dream. And I know, we know a lot more people that never did that, right? They never gave them a single chance. They discard that from their idea because they go, what if this, what if that, what if that? I'm not saying we all should jump and, and, and sell a house, <laughs> but we should all at least take one step towards a dream every single day. And sometimes it's as easy as doing an auction on social media to sell the first piece, right? And then you take the second step. Not all of you are married to a supportive husband. Some of you are like me, then there, there's not even a husband. That's okay too, right? She is lucky she had support, but there are many people that also pursue their dreams that didn't have any support. What we cannot tell us every single day is, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then start, I call the excusitis disease. There's always an excuse, always an excuse. Well, and I think we sometimes get hung up with like, like you said, it being validated. If it's yeah. valid to you, that's enough. You know, yeah. we're all worth that. Yeah. And a lot of people will always say it's going to go wrong. I mean, oh, I, it goes I, wrong all the time. <laughs> I always talk about the film The Labyrinth with David Bowie. Uh, there's a scene where the troll is taking the Sarah is taken through the labyrinth and they go through a bunch of rocks and they are going someplace, oh, they're going to the, la to the castle and the rocks say, don't go, it's too dangerous, stop right now. And she said to the troll, should we stop? And he said, what do they know? They're rocks, they never go anywhere. Yes. And you have to pinpoint who are the rocks in your life because they are always telling you you're wrong, you're not going to get there. Oh, nobody makes a living uh, doing art. I can prove you wrong because we bring people that do this full time all the time. Well, and you know, everybody has something different that they appreciate. Mm -hmm. When I started spinning, you know, everybody told me, okay, the goal is a smooth, consistent yarn. And I will agree, that's fantastic. I love smooth, consistent yarns. <laughs> but I wanted to create the crazy stuff yeah. that maybe wasn't what you were supposed to. Yeah create. And you know what? I love that I do that. I love my core spuns. I love my tail spun. I love lumpy, bumpy, crazy yarn. So if it's valid to you, it doesn't matter if everybody's telling you that's not going to work. If you have a vision in your brain, go, go for, for it. it. Yeah. I think it's the rebel inside us that makes us create. Well, you know, there's the, a, that the rebel living there. Let's go break the rules. You know, somebody has to do it the first time. Yeah, so. right. Uh, what is your creative process? You mix a lot of techniques. How do you find a happy medium between them? Just try and error? Um, well, it goes bad a lot of times. Um, I try to build, you know, thinking from the base up. So I like to start with felting or, you know, maybe a base that you can add to or you're going to want to cover, something that's strong. And then I just kind of go from there. With, the, with these bags, I find that texture can be your friend and also your enemy. Mm -hmm. um, that if you take something like crochet, it tends to be very textural. Knitting's a little bit flatter. Weaving's a little bit flatter. So I try to put, you know, flat next to something because if you just have a bunch of texture next to each other, so you kind of lose it. And the other thing that was really hard for me, but a good thing to note, is that I love variegated yarns. <laughs> I like to spin them, I like to buy them, I like to own them, but a variegated yarn is gonna show best next to solids, and so I have tried to build my stash with maybe some more solids because it makes your... You know your, it's going to go well yeah, with whatever you bring now. Yeah, too much color next to too much color just looks like mud, and it's the same thing with texture. Mm -hmm. That's probably the thing that that I would say, if you know those rules, you can do anything with it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, Tammy is saying, Jenny, beautiful observation about how your ch children develop compassion. And that is yeah, by I, facing things. I, right? hope that's, I hope that's true and that it, yeah, that they stay that way. Bree is saying the triangle loom class was very inspiring. And she knows because Bree is here in every class. <laughs> okay. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> I had 
had good questions in that class. That you made had, it, yes, yeah, it, it was, was really good. good. Terry saying, great interview, makes me want to buy an alpaca farm and learn to weave. <laughs> I brought that idea already with Nash. <laughs> Didn't hey, go the very far. Our house was for sale for a One while. more pet in our house and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so cute. They are fun. Uh, uh, okay, we want to show the bags a little bit more. Kay. And so I'm going to put every single one like this so you can see. The so other thing the looking front. at that one too, I, I made myself make this one because it was kind of the smoky colors. Mm -hmm. When I was looking at the trailer that we shot for this class, I realized that I think my go-to color must be turquoise. Oh. So I'm trying not to build everything Stay in with turquoise. turquoise. <laughs> Hold that one. Let me put this one up. This, oh, this is the one you're using. I see Yeah, it's got my purse here. in there. I think uh, I still need to find the perfect handles. So this but. is one side. Mm -hmm. This is another side. How cool is that? Okay, yeah, and the third one. This is my favorite. I liked this one too. So this is the front. So if you're going to do this class with us, I would say... Um, I would call this one chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. I would say beautiful, go beautiful, find beautiful. crazy things, either um, like lids to ice cream containers or yogurt <laughs> containers. This was, a, like I said, a big washer. So, you know, if you can find anything that you can crochet around, it's fun how it made yes. these little windows. Yes. That's, a, that's the other reason why you have to have creative people close to you because it's things that you know, like the yogurt thing, I never <laughs> thought about that. The other day I was in another group and they got washes that were all rusty the kind of stuff that I wouldn't even touch. And they made the most gorgeous scarves you could think of with uh -huh. those. So yeah, we need that. Okay, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? With all the activities that you have, with all the, the different types of, of fiber arts that you dabble into, what keeps your creativity in focus? Um, I think things that I see, other artists, I think that's why it's important to have a good socials community. Um, I don't know, just things I see. I, I draw a lot from nature. Um, I draw a lot from things I see you know, on Pinterest mm -hmm. and things I see other people make and sometimes just a simple need. Like, oh, I wish somebody made a, a bag that was this size that mm -hmm. had a place for my knitting needles. So. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's how <laughs> I create time. mine. Oh, yeah. I need to put oh, this more this. inside. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of what keeps me going. That and it's what I do for my own enjoyment. And when you enjoy something, it's always easy to stay motivated. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it keeps me focused and connected and I'm always thinking about the next thing that I can do, so. <laughs> Tammy said, turquoise is an awesome color, one of my favorite too. I don't know if you know, but she's a teddy bear artist. She gave a okay, course here, yes. it was really cool. Gwen is saying, I can't put this down. I'm a fabric artist and I have dabbled in some of those crafts, but you are inspiring to me to mix them up more. Yes, yes, mix stuff. Yes. And repurpose things, right? Mix, repurpose, uh, blend, you know, let things draw and, you yeah. know. And you before you throw something in the trash, think, can they have, can this thing have another life? Well, yeah, even like my little scraps. This was actually, I have um, outdoor couch cushions for okay. our patio. That's what that is. <laughs> and these were just crazy little scraps that I couldn't bear to throw away because I really liked the color and... See? And they got incorporated. Yeah, give a new life to things. Yeah. It's super fun. It is fun. <laughs> yeah. As you guys know, uh, Jenny taught the Triloom class here, which was a huge success. It, it was a three-day class, correct? It was. Mm -hmm. uh, so over nine hours, it's available to you on demand. But she's coming up with the class on the bags. There were, she's coming next week, actually. Yes, next right? week. Right? <laughs> Let's not forget that. <laughs> I'll be here. And she will be teaching you the freeform crochet, the, the felting parts. So you don't want to miss this because it's going to be super fun. You know how real she is as a person. <laughs> and that's one thing we always look here at Curious Mondo when we invite an artist. Of course, the skills are very important. The fact that the person knows how to, to teach is very important. But the first thing is we need real people here. Well, I am right? very real, so, sometimes too real. <laughs> too much, yeah, sometimes it can be, but it doesn't matter because that's what people enjoy yeah. today. Well, right? the other great thing about this class is if you've only tried a little bit of something, the one thing that I do love about these bags, like I really hadn't tried punch needle, mm -hmm. and this was such a small little Did place it where it didn't really matter if it turned out perfect. Mm -hmm. So 
come and play. Yeah, exactly. Come and, I, play. That's, that's, and bags for me is a great outlet. I love making bags too. And I do the same. I mix felting with embroidery. I was learning how to do ribbon embroidery. I did some. It's, it's, a, it's a small project mm -hmm. that you can put all your creativity. If it's good, okay. If it's not good, it will have a purpose in somebody well, else's life too. And the nice thing too is because these are so pieced, if you're a person that is always on the move, you can just work on one little piece for your bag and it's portable. Yes. Um, once you get putting them together, then I tend to sit in front of my... The machine. Yeah, <laughs> and I then I just finish it. But uh -huh. all these little pieces, I mean, they're really portable and they're kind of fun. Sometimes I'll make a piece and I'll think, oh, this is going to go on that bag and then it doesn't. And I just have a coffee can of random little pieces, but... So she's yeah. going to be wearing this one today. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh, it fit. Look, it fits oh, it fit everything. Too. Yeah, there we go. Uh, gifting again, right? See, gifting again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you it for was having really me. cool. And guys, I hope you uh, all, all like B Bree saying, oh, no, I will not be saving more things. <laughs> Looking forward to Jenny's next class. Yeah, we, we, we all save too much. But yeah, we need to give another life to things. So guys, again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, so much for your interaction. Uh, we appreciate the time you spent with us. You got to know uh, a little bit more about Jenny and her life and her journey as an artist and an alpaca farmer. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, next week, we are back here with another amazing artist for you to know. So make sure you tell your friends about us and share this video. As you've seen, we didn't try to sell anything, so it's safe to post anywhere. I know people worry about that because some yeah. groups are picky, right? So it's safe, no, no selling whatsoever. It's just good information. And it may inspire somebody else to start creating, right? Because I know you, you there are going through your fiber stash right now to see what <laughs> you're going to create next. Yes. <laughs> so I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Thank you.